This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 930, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. We are back for another day, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? Catherine's leaving town tomorrow for four days, and I already hate it. I just, are you guys close enough to somebody that when they leave, you hate it? Yes, but we were talking about this before the show. And yes. Uh, the first, I will say, 20 hours is great. Like, just <laughs> it feels, that's real nice. It feels like college. Yes, you know, I'll, I'll miss my girlfriend. She's out of town, but like, in my mind, I'm going to, you know, oh, I might, you know, hit my friends up, go out and be like the good old days. Yeah. Really, it's just me maybe playing some video games, watching right. some sports, hanging out, eating unhealthy food. But then, yeah, after about, you know, hour 20, I'm like, okay, I hate this. This is the worst. It sucks. I mean, well, first of all, she's not taking the dog with her. So I got the dog with me. So I can't do anything. <laughs> I could take him over to, there's this place called VIP. Very important pause. Get it? I like ah! it. I like what it. Do you, what do you think of that name? But yeah, Judy is, and Jude's kind of sick anyway. He's got a cough. You ever had a dog mm. with a cough? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Does that yeah. ever go away? I mean, Christ, he's had it for like two weeks. Yeah, usually it runs its course. I feel like right about the time you decide to finally take him into the vet, they're like, oh, actually, yeah, he's just getting over it. Here's some medication. Give us, yeah. you know, 500 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's. You, but I mean, he's 12 years old now. He's getting up there. So you kind of worry about that kind mm -hmm. of thing, you know, mm -hmm. Absolutely. whatever the hell the situation is. But yeah, we just, uh, she's leaving town. So I'm just getting hanging out. I can't even go out to my friends cause I'm on the, the Livia plan. So I can't go like, you know, sow down some food or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, by the way, I, I just, I was looking for something, a, a little boost or whatever. Have you guys ever had this rainstorm stuff? Have you ever had this? I've uh, seen energy, it. Yeah. I haven't had it. How is it? It's really good. I really enjoy it quite a bit. But then I looked it up, and apparently they think that anything that has caffeine in it is horrible for you. Do you think that – how many how many grams of ca – or is it milligrams, I guess? Would it be milligrams of caffeine? Yep. Yeah, it's usually milligrams. Yeah. And a cup of coffee. How many are in – I don't even know how many are in a cup I believe of it's about 100 is like the average cup of coffee. Oh, a cup of coffee, Okay. I'm trying to find it on here. I don't even see it on here anywhere. What yeah, is erythritol? What is that? Is that a sweetener? Uh, not sure, but I think those rainstorms have 200 milligrams, and I believe they use like a uh, plant-based caffeine in those rainstorms. So that should be good. It looks, yeah, it looks like a normal eight-ounce cup of coffee has about 100 milligrams of caffeine. Okay, and this, oh uh, yeah, it says natural caffeine, mm -hmm. which is I believe different? is better. So natural caffeine is better for you? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to be on the record and say that it's good for you, but right, it's right. less bad than artificial caffeine. Yeah. Natural. Natural caffeine. Oh, it does say natural caffeine, plant-based energy blend. So you're right. It is plant-based. So shut up and leave me alone for Christ's sake. Maybe you're going to get caffeine for Because so I won't get crabby and slap you in the head. That's why. You can absolutely drink those. What I... From my understanding, the new thing that you absolutely should not be drinking is those mm -hmm. prime hydration drinks. Have you seen these, Tom? No. What's that? So prime is like a – it's a Gatorade propel type thing oh, made by sure. Logan Paul and, an, and another YouTuber yeah. named KSI. And it's gotten super popular, but the problem is it's it, there's like chemicals in there, and some kid that has been drinking them a lot now I guess now has cancer. Oh, oh Jesus. They don't. They're saying it's linked, but maybe not directly caused by it, but they have these things called forever chemicals that are being found in the mm -hmm. beverage, which just sit in your body. They, they, they tax you. They Eek. Yeah. So that for right now, rain is fine. That one's perfect for you. Don't do, don't do prime. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not doing prime. We'll do, we'll do rainstorm. That's what we're doing. I like it. Natural caffeine. Tevin nailed it. I read it. He was right. It's plant-based caffeine. I, you can't be drinking a couple of thousand grams of caffeine a day. Otherwise, you'd never sleep. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably wouldn't live too long. I, When I worked with a chef, he would drink like three to four monster energy drinks a day. And, <laughs> oh. and it, it got to the point where his wife and his doctor were like, hey, man, like 
you probably like he i think he had diabetes as well and so he was like yeah you shouldn't be you got to cut back so he was like i'm doing good i've only had two today <laughs> so 400 yeah. milligrams of beverage Ugh. yeah then like the sugar oh. and everything like because i mean he worked long hours he was also like a semi-professional gamer in his free time as well so he yeah lived that life and just peeing nuclear waste yep Ugh. Now I gotta I gotta bring something up because I th- see I find this stuff entertaining and I, and and once again you know the the news industry in this town accuse me of this that and the other thing and the horrible and blah 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 and uh-huh. uh, I, I I was watching TVs you have to understand something I was the very 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 first morning show in America to invite transgender people on to talk about what it means to be transgender that was like twenty five years ago I did that. Tevin, mm-hmm. you probably remember that, I would think, or 20 years ago, whatever it was. Uh, it might have been a little before my time. but Yeah, I think I'm it was a little. Familiar with that era, at least. But, you know, we had them in, and they were nice. Or we had a man to a woman, a woman to a man, talked to them both. We had a great time and all the rest of it. That was at least 20 years ago. I think it was like 25 years ago, right? Mm-hmm. I have never cared about that kind of stuff. Like I said, when I was a little kid, there was a hermaphrodite on our block. I don't even know if you can call them that anymore. Or that's a medical term or what the hell it is. I don't know. But I've been around, like, every type of person you could name, right? Mm -hmm. So when I see stories like I saw this one, I don't care if you feel you're a a man that wants to be a woman, a woman wants to be a man, good for you. Live your life. We all got one life. You go ahead and live your life and all the rest of it. Now, all these other people jumping in thinking they have to defend you, uh, it makes me want to puke because they have no idea what the hell they're talking about. But this morning I noticed, and I'm just saying – I, it's none. It's none of my business what they do at high schools or all the rest of it, but apparently, a young transgender boy to girl came out for the uh, what the hell is it? What they used to call it, the shot put and all that stuff. The, oh yeah, track and field. Track and field. Tra- yeah, track and field. There you go. That's exactly what I was talking. We wanted for the track and field team, and see this part. And again, you do what you do. I don't care. I'm not trying to keep anybody off of anybody's team or whatever. But his very first competition, mm-hmm. he outshot put everybody else on the team by 30 feet. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. And so I'm not saying you have to, you know, make people like do one overarching rule and, you know, put everybody in boxes. But there should be at least a case by case basis where like, hey, maybe this person can be just the first female to play with the on the men's team. Because like. If you're out throwing somebody by 30 feet, there's some sort of. Some it was sort of on the national, national news, too. The great, it's on the national news. Look, here's my view of this whole situation that if you kiss somebody's ass because they're either a different color than you, they're a different sex than you, they're transgender or whatever, you're the one that's being a racist or homophobic asshole because you're treating them differently instead of just accepting them into society. I'm not always going to be nice to you, and I'm not always going to be nice to them either. I'm not kissing anybody's ass because of what they are or what you think they should be. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I, I just, when are they going to stop with this stuff? I think, look, if you want to you allow that kind of thing, that's none of my business. I don't have a kid that's transgender or any rest of it. And I certain, you've met Andy. He was never a shot putter anyway, as you know. <laughs> but 30 feet, I'm like, God damn. That'd be kind of tough to show up for the team when you know the guy can put it 30 feet past you every time he chuck or she chucks it out there. Yeah. And I get kind of the frustration from, you know, parents or athletes. Yeah. They're like, you know, hey, my daughter was, you know, a great, in this case, a shot putter. And then now right. the the guy that, you know, was out throwing all the other guys last year is now on the women's team because he's transgender out throwing all the women. I get, I get how that's a little frustrating and it's not mm-hmm. like this. Yeah. I think taking it on a case by case basis and saying, Hey, we recognize you as exactly. a woman, but because of the competitive balance, we're going to have you still compete with the men and you can be the first woman that beat yeah. all these men. I mean, stop. Think I just love the fact that everybody you're automatically either a racist, a homophobe, what they want you to be that. Because they somehow feel better about themselves trying to hang a label on you. That's what this is really all about. It's not about black people, brown people, yellow people, white people, transgender, whatever. The hell. It's not about that at all. It's about me feeling better about myself because I, fake piece of shit that I am, am faking caring about everyone when you really don't. 
let's be honest, right? Yeah. A lot of people only care when it's convenient for them. Exactly right. Like, I care to do a break right now because it's convenient for me. That's why I'm doing I'm going to read this commercial only because it's convenient for me. I want you to look again, understand something. I don't care who you are, what you are, what you want to be. I don't care. You're not getting better treatment. You're not getting worse treatment. You're going to stay right where you were because that's how I treat everybody. That's fair, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I guess so. Every new year is a chance for a fresh start, and the most profitable start you can make in 2024 is to take advantage of the business opportunities in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, baby. Make 2024 your year to discover the benefits of Sioux Falls. We're hearing from Minnesota companies considering expanding or even relocating to Sioux Falls area. It's a great area. Minnesota business people are excited about our short commutes. They have safe streets, quality of life excellence. We've got the details at SiouxFallsDevelopment.com. That's SiouxFallsDevelopment.com. In Sioux Falls, you'll discover a friendly pro-business attitude, along with a productive, growing workforce, no personal or corporate state income tax. That's a huge deal right there. Low workers' comp rates and a lot less red tape, too. We've got great people, affordable buildings, sites ready, and waiting for your expansion plans, baby. It's an easy decision once you look at the advantages. 2024 is the time to make your move, and that move should be to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Visit SiouxFallsDevelopment.com. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. I love it. That's, I think that's Mike singing the song himself, isn't it? No, hardly. Hardly not, man. KNL Surplus and Ammo in Line Lakes is my choice for firearms and ammunition. Jim, the owner, is one of the most knowledgeable people in the business. Great guy, too. He's great at getting you into the right firearm uh, for your needs. That's very important, by the way. Why do you need a firearm? Why do you want a firearm? You know, to talk about that stuff. KNL uh, Surplus and Ammo also uh, works with local groups on raffles, auction fundraisers. If your group has a fundraiser coming up, make sure to call Jim at KNL. His number is 763-757-2614. He can put together a great package for your event and help you raise more money. And Jim knows all about this stuff. The surplus, the ammo, the all of it. Guns, baby. KNL Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. You can reach them by phone at 763-757-2614, or you can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 930, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm not going to tell you again, Judd, when you're sheltered in place, you can't bob your head to the music. You're drawing attention to yourself. You know what ticked me off about that? <laughs> Here we go, baby. <laughs> so the alarm, so, so my wife, Dawn, was watching television last night, and, you know, it goes, uh, uh, and at first you're, all, you're always like, oh, it's a test of some sort, because it's always a test. And she's like, no, it says shelter in place. Jesus. And I thought to myself, you know... I pay a lot for cable. You can't you can't afford to get this wrong. Right. Cuz you're interrupting programming for an extended period of time. Yeah. Like this is not a this is not just uh oh, I'm sorry we goofed. I want a refund of some sort. I agree. <laughs> no cash I mean, in a barrelhead, baby. The this is no joke. You know what the what probably has scared me the most as far as startling me in like the last 10 years working with well, me. A while back, no, 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 I love to work with you. <laughs> a while back, I'm taking a nap on the couch. Afternoon snooze, right? Greatest thing in the world. Mm-hmm. And my phone starts going nuts. And I'm like, what? It was an Amber Alert. 
Oh. Now I totally get those, but uh, but I was like, oh my god, what's going on? Like I thought the right. world was coming to an end, and it was it was uh, yeah. So anyway, but this one this one I was like, you can't afford. I mean, a, a small section of Robbinsdale, and they actually have a shelter in place for the entire county. Come on, it's for the whole county. They accidentally did it for the whole county. Oh my god! And it's Hennepin County, so it's not like Podunk, USA. It's a huge portion of the Twin Cities they told the shelter in place. And then we're like, oh, sorry, it was just going to be a small part of Robbinsdale. Robbinsdale, Minnesota, man, one of my favorite places. On the- there used to be a place. It was like a dance club, but it was for teens. Yep. It was like a teen dance club in Robbinsdale, Minnesota. It's called Someplace Else was the name of it. Okay. I think I saw more fist fights in the alley behind that place between Robbinsdale High School students and North High School students I have ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> oh, I bet. I oh bet. Oh, my well, God. And that's when they had three high schools, right? Yeah. Robbinsdale, Cooper. Yes. And, and Armstrong. Armstrong. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. But exactly anyway, right. come on. Let's get this right. Yeah, that must have scared the hell. Did it wake you up? This one, no, I was in. I was actually in my office working, and the thing oh. went off. And at first, oh. I'm like, "Oh, it's just got to be a, it's just got to be a test." And then my wife's like, "No, it's not a test. It, it says to shelter in place." And and then there was like the the problem too is it took them forever to say, "Oh, sorry, we screwed up." Oh, really? So it's like, what the hell is this? I have a question for you. Does anyone ever get anything 100 percent right anymore? Does that ever happen anymore? I think, in my opinion, that depends on the on the aspect of life we're talking about. It yeah, feels true. like it yeah. feels like anyone that tries to like politicians feels mm-hmm. like it's very rare that they get things right. There's no question about that. I, I just just finish your job. Do we teach finish your job anymore in our school system? You know what it is, Tom. Hmm. My theory is this. My theory on life is that this is people, and, and I hate to say it, but your age, my age, mm-hmm. who, who got in control and are so desperately trying to keep control that they're trying to be the parent, right? They're trying mm-hmm. to be the parent, but they're blundering idiots. And like, like it's the same pe- people that were, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, people that we cross paths with at one time in life. And it's because no nobody with common sense, I think, wants to do do these jobs. Right. So you get all of these people who are just like, "Oh, this is my chance to be in charge. I'm gonna let's sound the alarm for the entire county." Hey, G- or you know, for, hey Joe, you pushed the wrong button, you dummy. <laughs> it, yeah. Why are you looking at AJ when you said that? Um, no, you know what? I I actually am appreciative of people his age. The adults drive me crazy. They both drive me nuts, seriously, because they're so far apart in the way they handle things. Mm. That's you know true, I mean? too. That's like, true what am I too. supposed to do? I'm stuck between the two of you. What am I supposed to do now? Well, but don't, but don't you have the uh, people, you know, in their 40s and 50s to blame because they raise these kids? I suppose. Like, who decided no, see, everyone needs to win? That's a good point, though, Judd, mm-hmm. because I am 72 years old, so I am out of both of those areas. So observing them from a distance, you know, if they're if I'm 72 and they're, they're uh, you know, 50, we're in a different generation. And if you're 25, we're in two different generations. Right. So I don't have a lot in common with either one of them, so watching them, is it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it feels like people that, it feels like uh, people in their 40s and 50s now looked at their parents and decided, I'm not going to raise my kid like that. But yeah. they've decided how I am going to raise my kid is they deserve a chance to win everything. They deserve a chance to get a trophy for everything. Right. And I think that is a fundamental problem because the thing about it is, unless you're smart, who's prepared to go out in the world now? You know? True. That's very true. You know, one thing I have to thank my father for, and I've never thanked my father for anything because he and I did not get along at all from the day I was born. But uh, the one thing... I, I did, my father did teach me is, however I do it, Tom, do the exact opposite, which is what I do. And it worked out beautifully. Ooh, that's interesting. I could totally see that. Yeah. Brilliant man. He was very, very smart guy, but he had no comments. Oh, he's mentally ill. That's the problem. That was a problem. A beautiful mind. That's basically my father. Yep. Yep. I can totally see that. But yeah, I I think we're just dealing with the frustration of 
what what you t- talked about, which is so many differing views of things. But I, I also just think that there's a lot of dumb people in charge. There's no question about Well, look, and let's go a generation beyond mine. Uh, if they're still alive, they'd be about 100 years old now. But there was a guy on our block when his kids misbehaved. He would take them out into the street and kick their ass in the middle of the street so everybody could watch him do it. Oh, wow. How disgusting is that? Okay, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's like, a Jesus. happy medium there between, yeah, that's that's not good. And, you know, I was personally, I mean, my parents, I was pretty coddled, but you see what's yeah. around you at that time in like the 70s and eight, 80s, and you realize, you know, and, and plus I was brought up in a generation where there was one trophy, you know, yeah. there, there yep. was a one class hockey tournament. There was, uh, you know, you didn't, uh, you didn't get rewarded for everything, but yeah, good point. I, I mean, it's a, it's an in-depth conversation, but I totally get the frustration too. And I, I just leave my cable out of it. Okay. You know, it is interesting if you go to somebody who's 100, somebody who's 75, somebody who's 50, somebody who's 25, and now we got newborns. We have five generations there, and, and in many ways, they couldn't be more different. Mm-hmm. It's pretty. It's fascinating, isn't it? It is. It is. And and I'm also, I I've also become big on the fact that for as frustrating as you might be with like a 25 to 35 year old at times, that you know the inability of people to give up what they do to hang hang on and mm-hmm. and not allow like a 30 year old can know a ton of stuff that we don't know yeah and it's not a tapping into to that consistently it feels like a lot of times my generation fights it and i don't know that that's the best thing but but you know we're talking about what like what you're saying all the it feels all the animosity right yes right Lots like all it. All of the I, I, hate might be too strong, but it's definitely something that's not productive. Well, I don't think there's any question about it. We've been laughing about this all morning, the fact that, you know, people are being gunned down the streets and run over and everybody hates everybody and, oh, my God, it's horrible and all the rest of it. Big announcement this morning from the United States, uh, or actually the city of, it wasn't the whole United States, it was the city of New York. They're, they've taken huge steps, Judd, and I want you to know this is very important. Don't worry about the people being murdered in the streets. Don't worry about the people that are starving to death. Don't worry about any of that. We have got to get rid of individually wrapped slices of fake cheese. That's, that's their big story today. Yep. Well, but the fact that, <laughs> but, but the fact that's even being addressed is exactly my point. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. That person right. should be removed from whatever job they do. I agree. And told 100%. you were no longer employed. <laughs> Seriously. Fuck. What like like what's the that that is such a waste of time and an insult to the current climate. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That person should be told, hey, you know what? Why don't you pack up your desk, jump in your car and go go home and never come back. Love it. Do you know anybody? I don't even know anybody that eats individually wrapped fake cheese. Do you know anybody that eats that stuff? I used to like it in my like twenties, but I haven't eaten it in years because I years. found good because I found good stuff. I, mm-hmm. I, I feel like it was, uh, you know, just in, off the top of my head. I feel like it was more popular in like the seventies and eighties. Yeah, I think that's true. But now you got yep. all these, you know, great cheese counters. Oh, like it is wonderful. I mean, grocery stores have come a long way. Oh God, absolutely, you they know, have no doubt. You know, it used to be you'd go to the fake cheese and and there would be cheeses. I'm not saying that there weren't, but nothing like you have now. No, no, no question about it. The selection is vast, and like you're saying, Judd, those single slices, those were like you know, kids need a ham sandwich for school. Throw the fake cheese on there, out the door you go. <laughs> true, that's so true. It's convenient. Yep, yep, exactly. What, what is right. it even made out of? It's fake cheese. So is it? Is there any milk in it at all, or? Well, I believe so because I remember Kraft, they did a big, you know, rebranding and it's now with 2% milk. And it was like, well, what was in it before that <laughs> this is some big announcement? You don't want to know, Kevin. It's plastic. You don't want to know what was in it before. That's the Probably key. Probably true. There's a lot of things you have, don't want to know. Like, there, there's a lot of foods I, you know what, I, uh, no thanks. Don't even I know understand. that. I understand completely. All right. Hey, your mean, uh, your baseball yes. team won last night, man. Come on, we Did got breaking really? news. Your baseball team won last I night, and you asked me a week ago why God hated the Minnesota Twins. 
Mm-hmm. What he gave them going into last night was a four-game series against the three and eighteen right. Chicago White Sox. <laughs> God, the sun is again shining on your Minnesota Twins. And if they sweep, they're going to be eleven and thirteen. Now, of course, that doesn't mean mean a thing if they continue to lose at, after that. But mm-hmm. uh, just when we thought that the good Lord had given up on the Twins, He gives them the gift of. One of the worst baseball teams I've ever seen. They have quit, ever. and it's April. Ever. Do you realize at the end of the year, if they stay at this pace, they'll have won 24 games? <laughs> it's remarkable. <laughs> They're going to make the 62 Mets look good. Yeah, absolutely. 24 games they'll have won. They'll have won 24 games and lost. So what does that leave you with? 136? Yeah. 136 That's- losses. Inexcusable. They need to start like relegating teams to double A and triple A. Yes, they do. You're I love that right. idea. We've talked about that for years. <clears throat> it, it'd be great fun. Just get them out of here. Get right. them out of the league. I, I mean, could could the White Sox beat a good triple A team right now? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think. What does Chicago do? I mean, the Cubs didn't win a World Series for like 100 years or something, did they? 100 plus. 100 plus. 100 plus. <laughs> 108? 100 years. I love Chicago. Well, I've been there in a long time. I heard it's very violent now, which makes me sad as hell. But I spent a lot of time in Chicago. I love Chicago. What the, You had the Bulls. The Bulls kicked ass, no yep. question. Played mm-hmm. some good hockey at times. But baseball, man, they've been horrible forever. And the Cubs finally did win a World Series, right? So, Yep. And the White Sox <sighs> won one in 2005. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's right. Five, yeah, because four was the Diamondbacks, right? Yep, yep. So so right there, we've got two World Series champions in that state, and both have won World Series since our club since in our 1991. Club. <laughs> Way back in 1991. Isn't that amazing that it's been all 33 years again? <laughs> and nobody else has won. But the Wolves play uh, game two tonight. If the Wolves can... Win game oh, two, yeah. they'll be up two rip on the Suns. You watch out, Tom. I'm the light happy, you. the light happy tunes could be playing for the Timberwolves. You never know. I do love yep. watching professional, excuse me, professional basketball now because they don't have to jump to dunk anymore. They just walk up and yak. Okay, Maybe. let's go back to the mm-hmm. other end. What is everybody like eight feet tall now? For Christ's sake, yeah, pretty much. I mean, we have two seven foot plus guys on the team. We have Wemby, who's like. He might as well be ten feet tall with right. his long arms. Here, yeah, he literally just you know grabs ball, sets it in the rim. I just love that. He does, and that's that's a good way to put it. He just sets it in the yeah. rim. That's, yeah. He doesn't even dunk it. Uh, what the hell? Gobert sort of just hops a little bit. He doesn't really yeah. have to jump. He just sort of like goes whoop, bang. No question. All right, Pally, a brilliant report, particularly <laughs> on the generations in America. And I agree with you one hundred percent. By the way. They're just, it's getting weirder by the minute. Mm. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. All right, I will uh, talk to you tomorrow. Looking forward to it, pal. All right. Thanks a lot. Judd Zolgad, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take a break. Be right back in a couple of seconds. Hi, this is Tom Bernard for Livia Weight Control Centers. Now is the time to get a jump on summer. You could lose up to 20 pounds or more in your first eight weeks. Olivia way, of course. When you join Livia, you'll receive a personalized and doctor-recommended program tailored to your unique needs goals, and lifestyle. That's an important part of it right there. The program is tailored to your unique needs. It's not like you need to do this. They figure out what what they can help you do, and that's what they do. It's a program to your unique needs, goals, and lifestyle. Olivia's amazing team of registered dietitians, nutritionists will guide you every step of the way. Join Olivia today and get your first eight weeks free, baby. I said free. So here's the deal. As I told you, I'm down to uh, 252 now. I lost in the first week, I, what did I end up losing again? Like 13 pounds in the first uh, couple of weeks out there on the program. I feel great. Went for a nice walk this morning. I go for about four miles in the morning, and then I do another few miles in the afternoon, and then we take Jude for his one-mile walk in the evening, so I get eight eight miles in every day. Uh, really liking the way everything's going. I'm a brand ambassador for Livia. Did you know that? And as a brand ambassador, I really appreciate the one-on-one support that I receive, and you'll receive, too, from Livia. They do a great job with that. Join Livia today and get your first eight weeks free. Visit Livia.com. That's L-I-V-E-A.com. Or call 855-GO-LIVIA. 
And Libby is now offering GLP-1 medications. Quiet the food noise and see accelerated results by summer. Visit Livia.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA. Start your weight loss journey now and get a jump on summer the Livia way. And by the way, I do want to mention again, shoulder to shoulder, baby. I'm going to go on GLP-1 because some of you are on it. And I figure if you're on it, I should be on it because we go shoulder to shoulder, right? We'll go through this together. Not a problem. It's called summer the Livia way. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard to find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Lindell and my pillow employees want to thank my listeners for all your continued support to thank you that having an overstock clearance and new product sale. It's going on right now for the best prices ever when you use promo code Tom, of course. And that, like I said, that's very important. Use promo code Tom. I did it because of, it's all because of Tom. And you get free shipping on your entire order when you do that, by the way. So that's a good thing. Get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six pack towel sets are only twenty nine ninety eight. I mean, less than 30 bucks. What do you think? Take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses, mattress toppers, 100% made in the USA, which is important to me. It's on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything's on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM and you get free shipping on your entire order. So... All you have to do is call 800-516-5146. Go to MyPillow.com. And remember, you got to use that promo code TOM. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. You horn tootin'. Who's that guy on the screen with you? I don't recognize him. Who is well, it? Hi. Who, hi. Must hi. be new around here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Channel 5 is Chris Eggert, brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation, 952-925-5608. Chris Eggert, about time you got off your ass again and came to work. Sorry about that. Did, did I miss anything? No, nothing happened at all while you were gone. No <laughs> problem whatsoever. I just, I still, Chris, I, honest to God, I, I just love the news, and here's why I love the news. I brought this up right at the beginning of the show. We're not worried about people being gunned down in every city in America. We're not worried about any of that stuff. We're not worried about the, the fact that our border is just people are streaming in. And we're not worried about people spending a quarter billion dollars of our money supposed to feed the people instead of fed their pockets. And they can't even find most of them now. We're not worried about that. The big announcement out of New York City this morning, Chris, no more wrapped cheese slices. There'll be no more of that in the city of New York. Uh, I, I didn't catch that. Is that, is that <laughs> environmental? True. Is that an environmental thing? It's because it's, I guess the wrapping is plastic, but I always yeah. thought the cheese was plastic too. So what's the difference? Yeah. We want to talk about protecting people. Let's talk about what's wrapped in the plastic. That's just <laughs> and I love me American cheese slices, man. That's my jam right oh, there. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm that white trash. I'm all about just plain old, uh, <laughs> Amex cheese, but I no, I hadn't heard that. That's funny. Yeah, I'm saying, hey, we don't. A woman got stabbed in the face last night. You know, people throwing on the streets, people stealing money like some bitch. But it's that cheese that's a problem, baby. But you, that goes speaks to the bigger point of there. If you can't solve the big problems, start start just checking off a list of little things that you can, you know, like cheese, like the dumbest thing in the world. Well, who? 
it's like a ref, it's like a basketball referee who can't actually control the pace of the game and is doing yeah. a terrible job, but just calls all these stupid little ticky tacky fouls because they've lost control of what's actually happened during the basketball game. And that's exactly what's happening all over the place. And then they take these little things and then turn them into an issue. And yeah. by God, to hell with cheese. I, stupid. Well, I will tell you, and you can be the, the, the final uh, contributor to this equation. Uh, because of AJ, Tevin, and I, did, we figured out between the three of us, the last time we had a piece of plastic wrapped fake cheese, when you put the three of us together, was about 90 years ago. So if you can do at least 11 years, we've gone over 100 years without ever eating a piece of that cheese anyway. Oh, hell, I can go last night, my friend. I had some <laughs> nice grilled cheeseburgers. No, no, no. And... I mean the wrapped cheese, though. You don't go wrapped cheese. No, nah, this is... Uh... This is a local um, place that it's. It was American cheese, but it wa- it wasn't like actually wrapped in the wrapped in the in the plastic stuff. But listen, no judgment here. I'm a. I got I got no problem with the with that cheese, but I do have a problem with like to your point, Tom. Like, well, let's not worry about the big stuff. Oh, and no. Taylor Swift released a new album. Oh, oh that's right. I forgot. Like, oh my god! If I had to see. That was like the lead story on the network news on whatever day the album dropped. Was yeah. it? Yeah. Yep. Did it come out Friday morning or whatever it was? And I was like, I turned on the national news. I'm like, oh my God, really? Like, so dumb. T- trying to be relevant. You know what? The yep. people who like Taylor Swift don't give two hoots of whether or not the people on XYZ national news show are into it or not. It's, it's I so couldn't dumb. agree more. Well, it's a different generation. I mean, like, right. I, I, like I said, I don't expect Tevin and AJ to like the Beatles as much as I do. It's a different generation. Right. But Maybe I do expect, do. but I do expect Tevin and AJ to be really into Taylor Swift. Oh, oh. like no bigger uh, T Swift fan than, <laughs> than this guy right here. I, listen, Tev, I, I pegged you as Swifty from day one. I, 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 I can yeah. see it. Yeah. We're all part of the, uh, what is it? The tortured poets. Society is that all? Oh, that's your album. No, no. Yeah, there department. we go. Yep. Tortured Poets Department. Yep, yep. What is it called? The the Tortured Poets Department is the latest and greatest in the discography of Taylor Swift. I can't take it anymore. I just I've been supporting this woman. I don't I, look. Full disclosure, and people end up hating me for saying this. She's not a very good singer. I'm sorry, but she's not. Ooh. No, she's not. She's not. She's not. You, you guys better watch it. And very it's not, smart she's, woman. Yes, she's very smart. She can market the hell out of herself, yep. but she's not like a an Aretha Franklin, Adele, like vocally great, where you, she can just stand on stage and wail right. out a song. No. Like a ballad. And God bless her. She yeah. figured out her her niche. I'm, I got nothing against Taylor Swift. I don't know anything about her. Never talked to her. Mm-hmm. I I just you know obviously her music is not supposed to appeal to me anyway. But I mean it, it just uh, yeah I, I, Anita Baker. You ever heard Anita Baker sing? There's a woman who can sing. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. that's what. I'm, and I, I look if you like Taylor Swift, I'm not saying oh you're a fool. If you like it, good for you. Look, I mean, they're coming to take me away was a hit when I was a teenager. What does that tell you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that song. They're coming to take me away. Ha ho. Ha ho. Ha ha. Yeah, I remember that song. <laughs> it was a hit. Song. So look at my generation. How bad was that? I got nothing against Taylor Swift either. I don't either. My, I don't my either. point is, I I feel like there's so much like pandering to that audience fr- yeah. from yep. people my age who are doing the news, and it's like just stop, dude. Like. Unless you're really, I, whatever, who cares? Uh, I did want to tell you about this before I go today. Um, <laughs> this is going to be a big, big, big deal. And I think I told yeah. you about this a couple months ago when it first happened. But um, United Health Group had mm-hmm. a hack that happened a couple months ago. And there's been slowly more and more information that's been coming out about it. It sounds like they may have actually like paid off paid a ransom to the hackers at one point. I think that was one of the stories that was floating around. And now United Health Group itself came out and said, "Um, this is a really big thing. And listen, listen, this is their own press release. Mm -hmm. You think about, it said a substantial proportion of Americans had their health and personal information stolen. 
Oh my a God. substantial amount of Americans. Oh. They're not putting a number on it, but for the company itself to admit that, mm-hmm. that to me means this thing is going to be way, way, way bigger than where we're at with it right now. I have a question for you. Yeah. Didn't their CEO just retire like two years ago with a pension of like $200 million? I'm not sure. And I, I think they have a moderately new um, person in charge now. Uh, so maybe that was the person who came in. I, I'm not, I, I do know a couple of things. This company is, it controls a lot of different aspects does, of yeah. healthcare, yeah. pharmacy, has access to a lot of people's information and a lot of people work there. Like a lot of our neighbors work there. A lot of people we all know work there. And so th- there's a lot of implications with this thing because if this turns, if this gets really ugly for them, oh. like the company itself could find itself in, you know, it could have a big financial impact on them. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. yeah and, 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 you know, it, impact people's jobs around here and so you know that's going to be interesting one to keep tabs on so how did everyone put a little footnote on that one when you when you see it did did a group of people just not do their jobs were they not paying attention how the hell did that happen Uh, it was some one of these like rogue cyber attack groups i don't exactly know much about it because i'm not on the dark web but Mm -hmm. um which, me by the way, if somebody could tell me how to get there, I'm not saying I'd be uh, against it. I just uh, www.darkweb.com. Yeah. Oh, that's tough oh, to get was, to. Yeah. I thought it was org. So oh. that's why I've been going to the wrong site. Is it it's org? It's not US, actually, Tevin. Um, <laughs> so I don't, I, I, I don't know much about the group, but you more and more of this stuff's out here. This cybercrime stuff is just with our information out there in all these different places. It's, it, it's not good. Not good. You are correct. Did anybody ever figure out if that last CEO, did you look it up, see how much he walked uh, away with? I know that their current CEO has been there for since 2017. Andrea Walsh, I believe, was her name. Oh, this was a guy. United Health is that place down on like 169 and 62, right? Well, there's a whole bunch of, of the yeah, that's true. over there. Yeah. But they've got Optum. They've got all these other. Oh, right. Um, yeah. And yep. actually, some of those buildings right now, I think, are not even being used because yeah, they're empty. Yeah. They've gone remote with a lot of their, um, with a lot of their employees, but it's a, I mean, it's a huge, huge company and employs thousands of people are all, all across the country too. So yep, going to be interesting. All right. I know you got to go, but I mean, if you need to take another week off, just let me know. Um, I got one coming in about a month or so. Oh, so we got a little Christ. time. Now. A month. I don't take had- any. I don't take any vacation. All my vacation is like saved up for this summer so I can do X, Y, Z. So. Okay. We believe you. I'm a hardworking man, Tom. There's the shoulder to the wheel. That's Lowly public know. servant right here. Just trying to bring you fresh information every day. You horn tootin'. That's all I have to say. All right, Pally. Well, yep. You too. Talk to you later. Channel 5's Chris Eggert brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48 minute evaluation. 952-925-5608. We'll take a break. Be right back. More news right after this. When you go to a restaurant, you expect a chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. Is that text you're sending so important that you miss your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. 
if you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take Personal Care Dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. A little news, a little information. I knew nothing about this. That whole thing about we're not, we got to stop selling uh, wrapped single slices of fake cheese in New York. That, I just brought that up this morning. The number one story on the complete sheet this morning is I didn't even know about this. Total coincidence. Number one story on the complete sheet. Do you really have to wash st- shredded cheese before eating it? Wash Who'd- it? Washing cheese? What? No, you don't have to wash shredded. What? <laughs> what? Can you just, like rinse it off? Can we like, all what? just be normal people for a yeah. day? <laughs> for just one day. Just a day. That's all I'm asking. Like, no, we don't need to be washing cheese. You don't need to be like <laughs> shaving your dog. You don't need to be like. Let's just all be normal for a day and see how it works out. And then we can take it day by day after that. All yep. I'm asking is for one day, Tom. That's that's all. One day. I'm the right shoulder to shoulder with you, pal. That's oh. all I'm saying. Have you ever noticed the dusty stuff on packaged shredded cheese? No, I have not ever noticed dusty things on shredded cheese. Have you? There are some brands that there is like a white powder on the shredded cheese that's a little bit more noticeable than others for sure. What was the white powder? Do you know what it is? I have, I have no idea what it is. I would assume it's whatever preservative. I know what you're stuff, talking about. Yeah. I think it's so that it doesn't like in the package doesn't stick together. So oh, yeah, sure. That's sure. what I've assumed at least, but uh, yeah. Okay. Well, washing their shredded cheese before eating it. There are some anti-caking agents in it, but you don't have to wash it. You could also just shred it yourself. Uh, have you ever noticed that the dusty stuff on the package that we were talking about, it's always there, whether you uh, see it or not. And it's about anti-caking exactly what you were saying. So that cheese doesn't all stick together. So, you, because if you shred cheese and you don't put something on it, it's going to stick together. And now you're back to having a block of cheese. Yeah, correct. <laughs> right. And you paid more to have shredded cheese, by the way, it does yes. cost more. Yep. So there you go. Different companies uh, use different methods. Kraft uses cornstarch. Well, cornstarch is not bad for you. It's fine, right? Yeah, no, yeah. cornstarch is fine. It's corn. Tillamook uses potato starch, also fine. Sargento uses powdered cellulose, which is refined wood pulp. Yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> um, wood? It says refined wood pulp. That's what it says. That's my first flag on the play, but so- <laughs> Sargento is off the list. Sargento. I don't know if I've ever even purchased. Have you ever purchased Sar- Sargento cheese? I don't know if I have. I used to. I have. But because it was always advertised as like the fancier, better, high quality. Oh, sure. Of the low get, quality cheese. I'd get their uh, provolone slices for yeah. like a uh, salami and provolone Ooh, sandwich. Oh, yeah. I love provolone. Oh, my God. Lucerne uses both tapioca and potato starch. What's lucerne? Lucerne cheese? Never heard of it. I haven't Sounds, either. Yeah. Sounds fancy, though. Yeah. It really does. Uh, other anti-caking agents uh, also include 
calcium sulfate, which is a component in cement. Yeah, I don't think I'd care for that much. Hmm. That sounds questionable, but they're all uh, food safe in small amounts. Still, not everyone is excited about ingesting these substances raw. I, do you think you're going to live longer because you don't eat, uh, you know, cheese that has a little, uh, you know, basically anti-caking agents like we talked about? You know, corn starch, potato starch, they're fine. They're not going to bother you. It's fine. What what I would say is it does it takes almost zero to little effort to like just get the block of cheese and so you can have freshly grated cheese. Oh, it's it, better anyway. It, so it tastes better. so much better. It takes yep. 30 extra seconds. It's minimal cleanup. Just just get the block, people. Don't yeah. don't get these uh, preservatives. Give your then you make yourself feel better about that sandwich you're making. And with like cooking, because these caking agencies are uh caking agents. They don't help it like melt as much, and so it's harder to make oh, sure. cheese and yep, if you're yep. baking and stuff or like macaroni and cheese, so it's better to use blocked cheese. Yes. God, is that one I, macaroni and cheese? I don't eat anywhere near enough of that. I love macaroni and cheese, but I hardly ever eat it. Oh, there's nothing but like that's probably oh. my favorite thing at Thanksgiving, Christmas time is just a handmade baked macaroni and cheese. Oh. Let's go. I have a love hate relationship with mac and cheese. I understand, man. We all, I think we all do, unless you're a lame who doesn't like. Right. How could you not like that? Like, are you a good lobster mac and cheese? Like, oh. It's just, it never, it never sits well. With my, I don't think I'm lactose intolerant, but I, I think for some reason, mac and cheese makes me feel a little, mm -hmm. a little uneasy. You know, it's funny. You brought up lobster mac and cheese. Somebody just brought up to me yesterday. The first time I ever took Catherine to, I was working at Capitol Records, so I took her to the Capitol Records Tower in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. She was probably at the time, I'd guess, 22, 23 years old, because I think I was 30, so I think she was 23. So I took her to a uh, very famous restaurant. I won't say the restaurant because it wasn't their fault. But uh, I said, she said, well, what should I order? I said, whatever you want. Uh, you know, what, you're good to go. Just order whatever you want. So she said, well, I'd like that lobster right there. I'd like that one. So they bring the lobster out. I had never heard of it or seen it before. I asked, and two separate people told me the lobster was a 10-pound lobster. Jesus. 10 pounds. In 1983, it was $150. So now what it would be, about 1200 Oh, at least. And that's <laughs> just one of the claws. Do you want it cooked or not? Because yeah. <laughs> exactly. more on top of that. I didn't even know lobsters got that. I thought they were like, you know, three, four pounds were the big ones. Yeah. But apparently they find one once in a while. I highly doubt these days that that lobster would even show up on the market. Do you think? Gosh, I don't know. Probably not. But yeah, just for the rarity of finding a 10 pound lobster, like that's a lobster that feeds a family of four. Like yeah. you probably right. aren't you a couple thousand or, bucks for it. Or Catherine. Family or Catherine. four. Okay. Yeah. Would you mind looking up one of you guys? See, the 10 pound lobsters even exist or do they just throw them back in because they got about three weeks to live anyway? I'm sure the meat would still be absolutely delicious, but I have, that's the only time I've ever seen one of those or heard of one of those. And the only reason I notice it is because I got the bill, but you know, don't worry about my feelings. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know. I, I think the biggest lobster I've ever seen personally is like three pounds, something like that. Well, like, so, cause I typed in just 10 pound lobster and you can buy a 10 pound box of lobsters, yeah, which yeah. would have three to five lobsters in it. So there that's you go. a 10 pound lobster has got to be just unheard of. I would think so. Now. And like I said, the biggest lobster I ever had is three pounds. So there you go. Three, ten, three, three, three pound lobsters is nine pounds. There's your, t you know, nine, 10 pounds of lobster right there. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm seeing on mainlobsternow.com. Oh, uh, I love you, Maine lobster. You can get a 10 pound lobster for uh, about $14.99 a pound. Or if you want to buy two and just double down, you can get two of them for three seventy nine ninety nine. dollars Look at that. And the world's biggest lobster ever caught yeah 44.4 pounds what <laughs> caught off of the uh nova scotia <laughs> i think i think they caught a monster like not, that's not oh, a lobster that's the, a monster there's a picture let me see if i can get this pulled up because oh the picture is like the the i don't even know what you would call them like the pincers the claws, the claws yeah. are like as big as the guy's face i believe jesus it. It, it, they're huge how much again? 40 pounds? 44, 44 pounds. Yep. 44 pound lobster. 
That's insane. Yeah. See, I thought 10 pounds is about as big as they ever got, but no, they get four and a half times bigger than that. Yeah. Holy God. That's wow. got to be like the, like the Godzilla or the King Kong of lobsters. Yes. Yeah. Like, I yes. feel like that's got to be the biggest one ever. Yep. Now we have to go eat lobster today. What do you think? Hey, if you're going to twist my arm about <laughs> yeah. it, why not? Yeah. I do love lobster. There's no question about it. All right, we took care of that. All we ever do is solve problems, but I had no idea, and I'm glad. I, I, I'm actually glad now that it came up because I thought 10 pounds is about as big as a lobster could ever get. Then I found out, no, four and a half times bigger than that. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, just a lobster the size of like a, a toddler. Jeez. Yeah, 44 pounds. It's crazy. You know what they'd say over in Japan if that came out of the ocean? Uh oh. Gojira. <laughs> I love the fact they pronounce Godzilla Gojira. I love that. Gojira sounds a lot scarier than Godzilla, doesn't it? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but we're Americans and just ruin the pronunciation. Yeah, Godzilla. It's Gojira. Get it right, damn it. All right, we'll take a break. Speaking of lobster, no, not speaking of things that creep. Guys with speaking claws. Of, Speaking of the guys with claws, Josh Arnold's up next. We'll be right back. In addition to having the best selection in town, KNL Surplus and Ammo also can help you sell your firearms safely and worry-free. Very, very important. You've inherited a collection of firearms from a loved one, don't know what to do with them, or if you have guns you're no longer using, call Jim at KNL Surplus and Ammo. Jim can help you sell those firearms safely and through consignment and auction. I know Jim. He's an extremely knowledgeable guy, great guy, too. will help you get top dollar, which is very important, of course. He will help you explore all the options and take the work and stress off of your shoulders. KNL Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. You can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain, and ship issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard to find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. Mike Lindell of MyPillow employees want to thank my listeners for all your continued support. To thank you, they're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever when you use promo code TOM. You get free shipping on your entire order. You get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six-pack towel sets for only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses and mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA. On sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM, and you can get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146. Go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. You are as a 44-pound lobster. I bet we have like a, you know what? I bet you we have the highest rating in the 44-pound lobster listening audience out there. That sounds all right. I And there's no information that can dispute that. Yep, that's so right. So I think we stake our claim. That's all I have to say right there. <laughs> uh-huh. Is Josh ready to go? I'm just thinking of about a 44-pound lobster. That's either a lot of shell or a lot of meat. And it's an <laughs> old guy, so you really have to be careful. And the only place that I've seen a lobster... Or actually, it's a lobster tail that wasn't 44 pounds, but it's awfully big. Is that uh, Manny's? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, what I mean, Catherine ordered a 10 pound lobster. 
I had never seen anything that big. And now this one's four and a half times bigger than that one. Holy God. Whew. It's a big lobster. I don't know how many people you're how, how many people you've got at your table <laughs> chowing on that thing. Yeah, well, you got that right, exactly. But what's happening with you, sir? Well, I think since we last talked, mm-hmm. I am a grandfather again. Daughter That's Marissa yep. and son-in-law Joe Doe delivered uh, six pounds, 12 ounces, uh, 22 inches of J. Arnold Doe. Also known as a lot of dough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. That's good news. I'm, that's very, congratulations, Josh. Yeah. I know it's, it's a hey. Being a grandfather myself, uh, three times, almost four times over now, it is a very, very special thing about life. No question about it. Well, this is very, very exciting. I did not think uh, the daughter was going to have any children. Oh, really? She and Joe Doe married. Yeah, they married late. They live in New York City. They both have uh, pretty solid careers. There was no talk of any children until it was, well, we'll try. If it works, it works. If it doesn't. Right. We gave it, we gave it a try. No, I and agree. The pictures, the pictures are just... Uh, just out of this world. I'm quelling. Quell. Joy would be the uh, nice term to use. And I am, as well as Joe, Joe Doe's father, Paul. We are both going, or I'll say, we are allowed to go see the grandchild this week. Wonderful. So that, that is the new news. That's the most exciting thing around. Forget about uh, the, the stock market. It's number four grandchild for me. And the first first boy of all the grandchildren. So very, very exciting uh, news with that. I'll tell you one Talking. thing. I... Oh, go ahead. Go, go right ahead. No, I just wanted to say very, very quickly that people don't really understand. First of all, if you haven't had children yet, you haven't been through it. And then uh, you go to grandchildren, like Andy's son, Ethan, calls me by, he, well, Fawny, Alex's daughter, is the one who invented Bop Bop, call me Bop Bop. So all the grandkids call me Bop Bop. But he walks over to me. He's, not, he's about a year and a half old at the time. He walks over and he goes, Bop Bop, tumble leaf. I find out that Tumble Leaf is a, an animated series. So I turn on Tumble Leaf. He sits right next to my left side and makes me put my left arm around his shoulder so he can watch Tumble You know what that does to a human being? The, the kid loves you that much. It's so special to him. I mean, that's what, that's what life is all about for me. I'm telling you that flat out. Well, I'm not going to disagree. I am not going to disagree at all. It's wonderful. It is, absolutely. All right, so what's going on in your world, Pally? So what's going on in my world? Big week for earnings. Huge week for earnings. Um, Not to mention some, um, we'll say, economic news. But the thing that uh, people have got to remember, and I've been telling my clients, higher for longer, the Fed's mantra is going to continue probably into next year. Uh, The Fed has changed their views from possibly three interest rate cuts this year to none. And if the economy and or inflation uh, continues upward, we might see interest rates kick up. Uh. That may not be taken well by the, by the marketplace. Number, that's number one thing, and that is possibly, or we'll say one of the causes for the market being in a pullback or not quite a correction, though technology shares are definitely in a correction down at least 10% from their recent highs. Uh, Bear market is when you're down 20% 
from the recent highs. Uh, we are in, we'll say, the biggest week for earnings is 29% of the S&P 500 reports this week. And we started started in with some of the steel companies, Nucor and Cleveland Cliffs, not doing as well as expected. Huh. Let's see here. The U.S. steel manufacturers have been given extra help through through tariffs, both both during the Trump administration and now with the Biden administration. And they still miss their numbers. Very interesting at that. Uh, we'll see how that translates. That's still in the industrial area. But another industrial, GE Aerospace, uh, did very well. They excuse me, they beat their numbers. Their stock is up $5 today at 155 bucks. GE has recently split into three different divisions, so three separate stocks. Uh, GE Aerospace is just one of the three. Uh, the other is their power company and their healthcare concerns, so you can be pretty specific so which division you'd like to invest in with GE. Mm-hmm. I know you're not a big Pepsi drinker. Uh, you're more of a, of a Coke drinker, Pepsi beak, but market said, nah, not really interested. You're still trying to raise prices and maybe people are not interested in paying upward. So that means your price points have probably topped out. Then there is, Spotify, uh, which beat, of course they beat. They're, they're number one in Europe. They've got a almost 60% market share in Europe. They're gaining in the United States. They've raised their, the cost of their subscription base. And they're still complaining that Apple does not treat them fairly. <laughs> so we want more. We want the governments from Europe and the United States to help us out because Apple doesn't treat us fairly on their platform. And if somebody gets a subscription on Apple or on Google, by the way, uh, we have to pay them a fee for that, you know, for that subscription. Horror mm-hmm. upon horror. Stop complaining. <laughs> My goodness. It's you're a true. leading music service and you're still complaining. We don't get enough money. <laughs> All governments help us out. <laughs> oh, please. I mean, and that's part of the, um, we'll say, Department of Justice suit against Apple that they hurt their competitors like Spotify. Oh, my goodness. Of course, Elizabeth Warren says Apple deserves to be sued because Apple ruins relationships with the dreaded green bubble. So if you have an Android phone (laughs) that uh, sends a message to an iPhone, it shows up as a green bubble. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. This is this is what the government is concerned with. A green bubble hurting relationships oh please particularly from please. a woman who claimed to be native american turned out she was like 1 240th native american <laughs> oh. oh my goodness too many too many complaints and you got too many too many other issues that yes congress or legislature should be dealing with hey let's fix the roads bridges highways let's get some infrastructure built um, and particularly with plenty of need, um, got to fix the infrastructure. Uh, this week, oh, the other thing that uh, could be very interesting in technology, a ban on TikTok, which is part of the pack- aid package to the Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. It includes a ban on TikTok. Oh, please. Again. Um, yep. 
TikTok we're worried about uh, gets information to the Chinese government. Meanwhile, the Chinese government uh, told Apple that they had to remove from their platform um, meta or Facebook related applications Mm -hmm. because the Chinese government is worried about security issues and the U.S. government getting information from those people who use uh, Facebook, Instagram, and other meta products. Woo! Well, in any case, this could actually, this ban could help Meta. Meta reports their earnings later later this week, and advertising uh, could start increasing for them if there is a ban on TikTok, and the ban would get removed if uh, ByteDance, Chinese company, were to spin off the U.S. version of TikTok, and they're information housed in the United States. Oracle has applied to house that information, but that's still many, many months away from from happening. Um, Meta does report, as I said, earnings this week, as does Microsoft, Google, Visa, and Tesla reports tonight. Don't expect too much uh, from Tesla. They do have some issues in the way of uh, pricing and lower car sales. Ooh, <clears throat> not good. All yeah, right, Pally, I want, I want you to do me a favor on Friday. When you come in to do the uh, family show on Friday, can we talk a little okay. bit about the fact that the United States of America now spies on every one of its citizens whenever it feels like doing so? That's a little they unsettling. Really yeah. They just, re- they just revealed that a few days ago, that you, the federal government now has the right to monitor anyone they feel like it. They don't have to get special dispensation or whatever. They can spy on any one of the American citizens they want to as much as they want to. I find that a little bit unsettling. Oh, I, I thought you were a liberal and like that. Yeah, that's very liberal. That's way over the top liberal, right there. Yeah, just oh, oh, I, I guess that's that's the progressives. They want they want to do that, but it's only on on people they don't like, right? Well, it's everybody, so they must not like anybody. Oh God! Oh that's, well. That's... Do some research, and I'll talk to you on Friday, pal. All right. Look forward to it. Thanks, Take care. Josh. It's a pleasure. Thanks. We'll take a break. Be right back. Kristen Bird will join us right after this. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take Personal Care Dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Hi guys, it's Chris Eggert from Channel 5 Morning News, along with my friends Megan Newquist and Ken Barlow. In the morning, we pride ourselves on sharing people's stories. I've been lucky enough to be part of this 5 Eyewitness News Morning Team for more than a decade now. This is where I've raised my kids and working alongside my friends for all these years. We're like a family too. We are family, Chris. Working with you and Ken and Hannah, it is such an honor to help folks start their day every morning on Channel 5. We get to catch people up on the news that's happening, and Hannah is here to keep an eye on the traffic around town. And when it comes to weather, I know people rely on me to plan their day and get their family out the door. Over the last 10 years, there were so many memories and so many laughs. I just love sharing the forecast alongside you guys. I feel the same way, Ken. 
to all you who start your day with us here on Channel 5, we think of you as family too. Thanks for turning on 5 Eyewitness News in the mornings. The new Tom Bernard Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com keyword partner. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Actually, it's not. It's the Kristen Burt Podcast, this part right here. Kristen Burt Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to NABanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. What's up, man? What's up? How was everyone today? Marvelous. Things are going well so far. But, well, you know, good. It's I was just listening to the uh, possible TikTok ban, and, you know, I know uh, – you guys were just talking about how that's going to affect uh, certain businesses. Obviously, mm -hmm. Meta would love for this to happen. But mm -hmm. Hollywood-wise, I just want to say that Hollywood has really relied upon TikTok to get the word out about TV shows, about oh, okay. movies. And it's if it is banned, it is going to have a huge impact on Hollywood, not in a good way. You know, it's interesting about that, Kristen, because I was off social media for 12 years. And then I got back on a few months ago or a couple months, whenever the hell it was. I don't remember, a month ago, two months ago, something like that. But, uh, and I talked to Tevin and AJ about the fact that it's not what it used to be. Like when you joined one of those, you'd instantly have like 25,000 followers or whatever. Now you get them, you know, a couple hundred at a time. And it, it's just not what it used to be. There are so many, for because there were only like three formats at that time, I think. I think there was Twitter. There was Facebook and there was another one, but I don't even know what the hell it was. But now it's so all over the place that, I mean, is any of this stuff real? How did TikTok get to be so big since, you know, America, didn't America pretty much start that whole thing anyway? The pandemic, really. I mean, it started as Musical.ly. Yeah, I don't know if anyone was on Musical.ly back in the day and then it morphed into TikTok. But the pandemic is what made that platform so popular because okay. everyone was bored in the house and in the house bored. And if anyone gets that reference, you know, you were on TikTok during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you get know that reference. Yeah. I'm on TikTok, Tevin. What are you talking about? I don't about? know. I didn't think you were going to. She's hip. <laughs> She's with it. I, just, I underestimated you. I didn't you know you guys were all did. communists. I'm a little offended, Tevin. <laughs> I had no idea all three of you were communists on that format. No, that's and see that that's the other issue. You you have all of the all the politicians going. We're going to ban it. We're going to force the sale so an American company owns it. I'm like, all of everyone's campaigning on it. Like I sit there and I see oh, really? every single politician who just voted against it talking to their <laughs> constituents on it. What a, what a shock! And, and here's what I want to say, and I I do think that this is an interesting theory. TikTok has become one of the best sources of information. And I mean that in a genuine way from the most basic things of like how you should be cleaning your house or like hacks for, you know, keeping your car running. I mean, really basic things. But a lot of information has been shared about politics and both sides often come together thinking, hey, uh, you know, we're as, as citizens of the United States, we're not being treated the way we should be. Our government is not taking care of us. And I, there are some people who believe that the government wants TikTok shut down because it's actually empowering the people with real actual knowledge. Of what? Everything, everything about life that you could possibly imagine. I mean, and what I love about it, like there's this woman, Babs, who comes in, she's a boomer, and she will give you hacks on how to like live your life, cook food. And that sounds so stupid and basic, but she does it in a great way. And it's about speaking to another generation that is that just crosses the generational lines that we're like, oh, we don't like boomers. We don't like Gen Z. We don't like millennials. And we completely forget about Gen X. Um but that's what TikTok does. I really think it brings a lot of people together. But the big problem you had, the way you started the, the conversation was the government taking care of you is a huge problem because people have become so dependent on the government now that it costs 
people like the four of us a lot more money to live in this country because they're using our, they're not using their money. They're using our money to take care of other people who think they need the government. I don't want the government helping me with anything. I really don't. It no, I understand, but let's just say, like, and and this is this is the truth. If there is a massive earthquake today mm-hmm. in Los Angeles, if you're not prepared, FEMA's not coming out for you for at least four, maybe five days. If you're yeah. lucky, three. Yep. I mean, those are the things that that you have to realize. And I think people go, well, why are my taxes higher if I'm not getting even mm-hmm. basic things like potholes filled? Mm-hmm. And that's the whole, well, that's exactly what I'm saying. They're not filling the potholes because everybody is standing there with their hand out. That's why mm-hmm. they don't do that any longer. There are plenty of people who need help, though. I mean, and I'm going to talk about the that. unhoused in the unhoused in all of the cities because they like to point out that it's just California. It is not. It is every city. I have traveled yeah. to, to Charlotte and I've seen it. I saw it in Miami. It doesn't matter what color you are, a red state, no, blue state. No. The unhoused is in every state. I have a question for you though. I don't have anybody in my family that, that doesn't have a house. Is that, I mean, is it normal for somebody to have a brother or sister or mother or father, whatever that, that has no place to live? Cause why wouldn't you help them out yourself? A lot of times there are, um, addiction that goes on. I had a friend uh, who, yeah, who lived on the streets for a year. Um, mm-hmm. and it, and let me tell you, she was super successful in Hollywood <laughs> doing feature movies, starring in TV shows, got into, had an opioid addiction that turned into a heroin addiction. And her mother at times did try and save her from the streets and went and visited her every single week once she found out where she was living and said, when you're ready to come home, we will help you. But that does involve getting clean. And she did reach her limit after about a year and Mm -hmm. lives a great life now, sober, has a family. But it. it really can happen to anyone. And I think that that's, one of the things we sometimes think it will never happen to us. It can, it may not happen to you. You may be like, I, I'm not going to, I'm not the type of person who gravitates towards drugs or, or, you know, or anything else like that. Mm-hmm. But there is always a possibility. Really? Mm-hmm. If you're not doing drugs or drinking like a fish, how could it happen to you? I, a lot of people find are living paycheck to paycheck right now. Oh, I understand yeah. that. And that consider yourself lucky if you're not. Yeah. And, and I yep. think, you know, we don't know everyone's family situations. No. A lot of people have complicated family situations. Yeah. Or like veterans, a lot of times coming yes. back. Well, yep. mental health. Issues. Well, yes. Yeah, so. Don't bring up mental health around me. Okay. They're pointing fingers at me. I can see it. Right. Okay. <laughs> Let me find. Let me find the right direction. <laughs> you know what? It'd be kind of nice if if the population of the United States kind of stood up and said, "You know what? For every five people, let's take care of one person, so the government doesn't have to do it." That what would be think? great. But why, I will why tell don't we do you, something like that? Some of the mega churches are in it for the money. I why understand. is your pastor driving a Lamborghini? <laughs> the Lord wants him to drive. And that. wearing a Rolex watch. At, like, where is that <clears throat> money right. coming from? And that is that is the truth. I You're I right. Joel Osteen, who is, you know, when Houston had a huge hurricane and they needed a place for people to go, he did not offer his church. Really? Oh, yeah. That, that was a huge scandal when that happened. They're huge like, scandal. Like, you're literally preaching about helping your neighbors and being a good person, and you can't even help out people that now are genuinely in need. Very hypocritical. That's disgusting. Yeah, yeah I mean, that and is And, of course, there are plenty disgusting. of other smaller churches doing wonderful things. Let's yeah, not Yeah, sure, just, absolutely. Yeah. I, it just, now I'm sad. Thanks for coming on at the end of the show and making me sad, Kristen. Way to go. Yeah. Welcome. Way to go, you <laughs> no, but I, I am interested to see how this TikTok situation plays out. And there's a lot yeah. of people who also earn their income off of TikTok. And oh, that really? is also going to be a problem. Yep. They're part of the creator fund and they do brand deals. And there are going to be a lot of unhappy people if this moves forward. We shall. Well, wouldn't it just shift over to other formats anyway? No. Oh, it because, doesn't. Okay. No, it's not. And I think, like, I think, you know, you've got Meta who sit there and think, oh my God, everyone's going to come back to Instagram and Facebook. They're right. not. They don't like you. Facebook was the source of um, tremendous disinformation during the pandemic and during several election cycles. And they didn't do anything about it for a long time. That was problematic. Oh, okay. So you have a lot of generations that are very that don't even bother with Facebook anymore. Instagram oh, is I know that. a yeah. graveyard, honestly. 
Is it uh, really? Yeah. So nobody's on. So where, if you're an American and want to go on an American outlet, where would you go? Something new is going to have to pop up because really? no one wants Elon Musk in Twitter. So mm-hmm. take that oh. out of the equation. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, and that Mark Zuckerberg, he's a piece of shit too, isn't he? Well, that's exactly it. No one wants to go to Meta, so. Yeah. I don't, so that, why do they do that? They're tremendously successful and they have to screw it up. I just don't understand that. Yeah, they're not giving you the service you signed up for. And the service you signed up for was complimentary. Now they've found ways to obviously monetize it. If you want a blue check mark, pay us, you know, $15 a month. Why would I pay a billionaire $15 a month for a blue check mark? You have to be kidding me. Yeah. (laughs) Now, I would, I, seriously, we just, I didn't know you were going to talk about this today. We're talking about it at the beginning today, but it was a real shock for me to get back on social media. And I was told because of my age group, most of them are on Facebook. That's mm-hmm. what they choose. I don't know if that's true or not. But back in the day, if I would hop on social media, the first day I would have like 25,000 followers. Mm-hmm. Now I've been on about a month and I have like 3,000. Yeah. It just, they don't use it anywhere near as much as they used to. No, I go on less frequently and uh, than I used to. Even from a year ago, I noticed that, like, there, I used oh, to yeah. be on Twitter and I would tweet like five, six times a day. Days go by and then I'm like, oh, let me see if anything's happening. You know, let yeah. me dust it off. Um, same thing with Instagram. People used to post two times a day, mm-hmm. like on their actual feed. I'm not talking about Instagram story. And, you know, months go by for a lot of people before they post something. Is TikTok owned by the Chinese government? It's owned by a Chinese company, from what I understand. It's but... a company, but does it, is government part of it as well? AJ, you're making a face. What's that all about? Uh, it's, it's called Bite like Dance. Bite Dance, yeah. Yep. What's Bite Dance? Is that a company or is that part yes. of the... Yeah. It's, it's a company in China. But is it owned by the government? I uh, am not sure. It's a technology company. Let's see. It doesn't looked like it's owned by oh, the it government. doesn't no and the ceo on the u.s side i know you know he's um i think he's from singapore if that's correct and okay. that's the thing like when he was being interviewed by a lot of congress he was like they kept on going so you're chinese and he's like no i'm from singapore like it, it went back <laughs> it was, oh it, it was, just it was it infuriating was, to watch it was infuriating because the There's just so much misinformation that because exactly what China, you know, if they're saying that China is spying on on people, like if they want to sit there and watch me break down Dancing with the Stars as they're spying information on Americans, Mm -hmm. knock your socks off. Um, But understand that Meta is doing the same exact thing. It's just an American Mm -hmm. company. Oh, okay. And China has its hand. (laughs) This is weird because this is the other thing, too. China has its hand in everything in our in our politics and in yeah, our real estate yeah. and in our food supply. And we're worried about TikTok. and TikTok is really for the people. <laughs> so there, it just seems like they're, they're putting all their eggs in one basket and it's a very mm-hmm. weird basket of eggs. It kind of seems to be, I'm, I'm really, I look, I, 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 I've run into some people that I've known before and there's some new people I've met being on, on Facebook. So I probably wouldn't hop off that. But I, I, by coincidence, this morning, I started the show talking about the fact that you just do not get anywhere near the reaction on social media that you used to. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you made a comment before, you'd have thousands of people commenting on that comment. That doesn't happen anymore. And, and Tom, to your credit, I just want to say that your Facebook page is doing extremely well. Understand that you have over 200 comments. That is mm-hmm. actually not the norm. Oh, really? Getting like 10 comments is probably about the norm. Yeah. So really? you should actually feel really good about your page. Well, it's very nice to hear. I, I had no idea that was because seriously, back in the days, it was a th- couple of thousand comments on mm-hmm. everything. But it's just not going to happen again, is it? No, it's there's just too many people on it now where it's. Well, now there's not enough where back in the day it was everybody was on there playing Farmville and it was great and it was oh, friendly. Yeah. And yeah. now it's just a hate filled app. And so everybody's moving away from that. And, and I think a lot of people are kind of just unplugging from social media in general, where they're like, seems we went, like it. Yeah. We went through the pandemic where we were all kind of had to be forced to be virtual. And now let's go out in the f- open air and experience life rather than be addicted That's to our true. phones. My brother completely quit 
all Eddie social really, media. He yeah. just, he's like, I'm done. I don't. There's no need for it. Yeah, it's pretty interesting because obviously being off it for 12 years, I had no idea to change that much. I really like the people that I talk to on there. They're very. I have not had, and of course they block assholes now, which does help. Uh, you know, that does help quite a bit because I have not had one person make a negative comment on anything. Maybe they did, but they don't post it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just blocked someone on LinkedIn this morning because they kept on spamming me <laughs> with I'm messages. Late. And I was like, I told you I wasn't <laughs> interested. Stop it. And then after I said, I, and I politely said, thank you so much. I'm not interested at this time. They were trying to sell their financial services. They oh, came yeah. back with more questions. And I was like, and block. <laughs> <laughs> well, Facebook is really protecting Uncle Tommy because I have not seen one negative comment in the few weeks that I've been on it. That's good. You're what building a nice community and your engagement's good. So They're I mean, very that, pleasant. No, that's good. I, well, I'm glad I talked to you because I thought, God, when I left here, I had tens of thousands of followers. Now I got like 3,000. But I suppose that's a big number these days. It, it no. is, and a lot of people have just quit social media altogether. And, and for a lot of people, it was a mental health thing. I think some of it did come out of the pandemic, as Tevin was just speaking about, because I think it's, you know, you're on it all the time, and you're like, why aren't I outside, like, doing mm-hmm. things? I just wasted yeah. two hours on a social media platform. I love it. All right, we'll close with an uh, education for you. The number one thing I saw in the news this morning when I was checking out the news was, New York City is going to ban individually wrapped slices of fake cheese. I'm okay with that. That was the that. big story. Now, I mean, who eats it anyway? Who exactly, does eat that? I was like, if you want to eat it, you should eat it. Honestly, yes, no one yes. should ban it. But mm-hmm. I was like, I do think that they're kind of gross, to be honest. <laughs> I'll be right there with you side by side. No question. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Yes. And just a reminder, tonight is the Shogun season finale. So make sure to watch it. Don't even bring that up. Tevin's too involved in the Timberwolves game. I was going to say, I'm going to have to push it off for a day. But <laughs> oh, it's on board Shogun in is a damn in house board. Shogun's a damn good show. It, it is, is a good, good show. It no is question. A good one. All right, sister, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks. Kristen Bird Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Yeah, I will close with this. It's kind of interesting when I look at it this way because I did grow up a nice Catholic boy in a very poor neighborhood. So I just assumed people didn't like me as much as they used to because they didn't respond like they did 13 years ago. Isn't that hilarious? You kind of yeah. always go inward with that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. I've, I'm the same way where it's like, oh, it must be something that I did. To, to <laughs> get up and up. It's true, isn't it? What did <laughs> I do wrong now? Yep. All right, fellas, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Family shows up in about 15 minutes. See you. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.